Hello everyone, my name is Xi Yuan Wang from Huawei. Now I'd like to share the topic to you. It is called Bring the Power of Onyx to Spark as it never happened before. This slide is prepared by Yi Kun, Zhipeng and me. Okay, let's start. This page shows the simplest workflow of inference flow of data and AI pipeline. In general, the user uses the Spark as data processing platform and uses the Onyx runtime as inference platform. The well-defined data frame inference interface is very friendly to data engineer, and the data engineer can easily to load data and complete the feature engineering. They are very profi proficient in data processing as a de facto standard of the big data platform. Spark can help users easily and conveniently use a simple interface to divide huge data into each executor. Especially in recent years, Spark has enabled Pandas on Spark API since version 3.2, which is also very convenient for users. At present, various AI frameworks such as TensorFlow, PyTorch, Manspore, and so on has their own implementations for developers who use AI framework. They are often proficient in par parameters you uh, turning of AI frameworks and, and the internal principle of frameworks. There are some gaps um, or fri friction points between the two because data engineers often do not understand the framework very deeply and they do not know the internal of various framework. And the same as AI engineers, um, they don't know um, the deeply about the data big data framework. Therefore, the Spark community has also initiated a discussion on Spark improvement proposal. Um, it is called SPIP, hoping to head the complex process, process of each framework by providing a simple API and to make the process of Spark and AI inference smoother. The goal of this SPIP is to simply simplify the deployment of DL models to Spark inference, enable integration with third-party DL frameworks, and the target persons are data engineers who need to deploy DL models on Spark, or the developers who need to deploy DL models on Spark. You can also search the JIRA to learn more. This SPIP is still under discussion. If you are interested, you can join the discussion as well. This is a simple example to show how the developer should complete the inference after DL on Spark enabled in the future. We can see that the only thing the user needs to, needs to do is to import the corresponding framework extension and model URL. Then all the complexity, including type processing, conversion, and the framework initialization are hidden in model UDF. What each, what each framework needs to do is to, to implement the corresponding imp implementation according according to the actual situation of the framework. Then see the right picture. The Spark will help you to execute the Onyx inf inference in Spark Executor, and Spark will help gather the final result. In this way, users can easily complete, complete Onyx inference on big data. Onyx Runtime as an inference platform to optimize and accelerate machine learning inter inferencing, especially by providing a well-defined middle layer 
It builds a bridge between the underlying AI acceleration hardwares and model inference with Onyx format. Huawei has its own AI processor called Ascend. So if we want to complete the Spark uh, and Onyx pipeline on the Ascend platform, we should introduce Ascend support in Onyx runtime first. First of all, I'd like to introduce the basic concept of Ascend. Ascend is the name of NPU AI processors from Huawei. Around it, Huawei has built the Ascend AI ecosystem. Let's take a look at the graph here. The gray rectangles here represent different Ascend processors models. Ascend 310 only supports AI inference, and both 710 and 910 support train and inference as well. Based on the processors, Huawei built a series AI-related hardware, which is shown in the blue rectangle. They are called Atlas. Here, I'd like to say more about Atlas uh, 3000. It's a kind of PCI card and used widely on data or AI process servers. Our develop and task work is based on it as well in Onyx. Then, based on the hardware, Ascend ecosystem also provides a software layer called CAM. It is the yellow rectangles in the picture. CAM provides APIs to help developers quickly build AI applications and uh, service based on the Ascent platform. Mm, frankly speaking, it's similar with CUDA in, in NVIDIA ecosystem. For software, CAM is the main point that uh, both developer and AI framework should know. Let's focus on CAN here. This is the CAN technical stack view in Ascend ecosystem. Last year, my colleague Zhipeng has shared the CAN stack, stack already in the Onyx meetup, where it was based on CAN 3.0 version, which is out of date. This picture here shows the newest version called CAN 5.0. As you can see here, there are multiple layers in CAN. It contains service layer, compilation layer, execution layer, and the base layer. For example, service layer provides operator library, optimization engine, and a framework adapter. In general, developers do not need to know them you may only focus on Ascent Computing Language. It's called ACL. It's the API's part to help you control Ascent hardware's VAR CAM. Currently, if a user wants to run Onyx model on Ascent hardware, he should first use the model translation tool provided by CAN to translate the model from Onyx to Ascent. The flow is a little complex, and the translated model may lose some precision, and the performance may poor. Even in some cases, the model may cannot work correctly. To solve the problem, a better way is to find a solution that uh, Onyx model can work on Ascent directly. So in Onyx runtime, we'd like to add CAN as a new execution provider. Once it is done, users can use Onyx model on Ascend hardware via Onyx runtime directly. Of course, we'll add the related CI as well. For example, we can donate VM resources which contains Ascend hardware to the community. The orange line below is our roadmap. First, we'll push the basic code to upstream. The end-to-end -end flow will be done, and the rest night model should work correctly. At the end of this year, we'll finish all the Onyx operators' support and make sure all the models in Onyx Model Zoo works well on Ascend. 
In the next year, we'll focus on optimizing work, like, for example, like performance improvement and so on. Now the POC code is almost done. Use the POC code, you can now run um, some basic op operation correctly on a send using Onyx runtime, for example, the add operation. If you are interested, please leave us the message. We can discuss more in the future. Maybe we can provide assigned resources for you to test as well. Okay, that's all of our topic. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.